werkruimte. Een uh, kantoor. Abba. Ja. Alle negatieven. Alle negatieven. Ze moeten allemaal ergens daar zijn. Ja? Ja. Dit is een donkere kamer. Dit is uh, de vergroter. Een hele oude, die ik denk dat oud is. Dat is de beste die er is. Die ontwikkel ik in. In dit bakje, in dit badje, hebben al heel wat beroemdheden gelegen. Water, daar spoelen ze in. Ja? En dan gaan ze uh, hier in de, door dit luik in de droger. En dan komen ze daar, daar, daar droog uit. Ik zie wat foto's van het Debbie Harry concert liggen. Ja. ja. Ook wat... Uh... Die dan niet, niet gelukt zijn, daar, hier neem ik Even aan. kijken hoor. Uh, of nou? Ja, ja dit is dan niet, nee. Dit, die zijn het uh, niet geworden, of wel? Uh, nee. Dit vond ik... Die is wel erg... Uh, somber, hè? Boos. Ja. ja, nou... Ik vind, dit vind ik lelijk. Ja? Dat is wel scherp, zie je, dat handje. Dat ja. is niet zo scherp, maar dat handje is dan wel scherp. En het is een, ik vind het een lelijk handje. Ja, nee, daar ben ik niet bekend om, om live foto's. Dat is, dat is zo. Dit is die piers. En die moest ik uh, nog even afdrukken vandaag. Ja. Hey. En dat is wanneer was dat? Deze nou, foto? Uh, 83, schat ik. Ja? Ja. Ik weet ook niet of iedereen uh, reduceert, maar dat is dus echt heel belangrijk. Ja? Ja. <laughs> nee, ieder, nou, ieder, ieder, uh, ieder foto heeft wel, wel iets uh, waar je een beetje, een beetje bij kunt, uh, kunt stellen. Kijk, je ziet hier zie je dus een, uh, een wit, uh, wit stukje, wat een beetje disharmonieert met, uh, met de rest. Ja. En dat is omdat er nog een stevige korrel in zit. En dat, heeft dit niet, is het heel moeilijk om dat, om dat een beetje grijs te krijgen. Maar daar ga je ook van uit dat het in druk moet gaan verschijnen, dan in dat geval. En dan... Wat dan? Nou ja, dan, dan is het niet zo belangrijk. Nou, dat gaat wel. Nou. Dat kan wel. Ja. Nou, zo, zo doe je het. Soms haal je, dan haal je gewoon on, onwillige witte, witte stukjes, die, uh, die, haal je, die haal je weg. Of je zet, uh, zoals hier bijvoorbeeld, dat had ik ook nog kunnen doen, je zet hier uh, een tandjes even een beetje, een beetje, een beetje los. Ah uh, ja? Zo. Gaat wel ver, vind ik. Of nee, nee, dat vind ik, nee? Nee, vind ik niet. Dit zit, zit er toch? Dit is dat kan natuurlijk ook iedereen. Maar toen ze het. Well, do you remember what you liked spe specifically about uh, Blondie? I liked su uh, surf songs and things like that and uh, that cheesy American pop, you know, that sort of um, I fought the law, but the law won type songs, Bobby Fuller type songs. Mm. And because I, I heard all that music when I was young, when I was a kid, but I guess I was too young, you know, in the, in the 60s to really think about who it was or what it was, you know. So it sort of like rediscovered it that way.
I was I was here for some business meetings and things like this because I'm trying to find a European deal and um, ran into these guys from this television station. Jeffrey used to come to our hotel room and he used to he used to sort of run this fan club for Blondie in the early days and we used to have to throw him out of the hotel room. Did you have anywhere to go? <laughs> why, why did you have to throw him out? Well, because he wouldn't leave. <laughs> he would just sit there. He would just sit there. No, that's All what right. I was referring to. Jeffrey had did not have any career at that time and was just so, like, hey, you know, Ronnie. floating oh, teenager yeah. wondering what to do in life. And, and he figured out how to do music and uh, it's been an oh, uphill yeah. battle ever since. I used to stay around all the time, yeah. My parents are getting divorced and I couldn't go home. <laughs> They're fighting. I have to edit. and I go try them, you know. And usually I never can remember exactly how they're done. But sometimes I, have, I can get a good idea that way, too. I, some, I'll just distort what I think they sound like. I tried to hawk that off to him. <laughs> what did he say then? What did he say when he... I don't know, he was... He was, he was I think he was drunk or something. Right? Uh, yeah. I think we just sat around howling or something for like about 10, 15 minutes and then... Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> That's all we did. I, 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 you see, I think he said he liked it, but it, I think we all forgot it after because we were just bummed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I used to make them up like, I used to always just, whenever I made up something, I used to just, you know, go hawk it on the text and the horse sets, you know. <laughs> like, um, oh, we're gonna play Ain't That Peculiar like this, you know. Smokey Robinson songs are kind of closet blue songs too. So we just changed it to like straight off Delta Howlin' Wolf song. <laughs> you know, we should change it to Howlin' Wolf. Oh! 
Phil Alvin and the Blasters got me hooked on it. And, then, uh, and Bob Height, Blade of Canned Heat. Bob Height, like, you know, had us over the house a few times, just showed us incredibly wonderful records that just simply were not available or in print, and there was no way to obtain them. And, and um, you know, he just sort of created, like, the whole fascination with finding, finding uh, undiscovered products. It's like archaeology in a way, I guess. We would buy stuff strictly only on the basis of the title. It looked like it might be a blues record. <laughs> Don Waller, who wrote a book about Motown, was a real close friend of mine. A big influence at the start of the band, getting us into the whole darkness surrounding Robert Johnson and all these things. All these things that sounds pretty exciting to a bunch of young musicians. <laughs> Bob Height used to tell me about, like, oh, yeah, we took a trip. Oh, we took a trip to Alabama. And he goes, and we found, um, oh, what was it? Yeah, we took a trip to Alabama. We found an old record distribution warehouse that I'd read about, you know, which used to put out a lot of Ace and Sun and records of this sort. We thought we'd have a look in there. And, he goes, and they go through this old warehouse, and the records are all still in there. It's just this warehouse. No one's ever cleaned it out. No one wants to clean out a bunch of 78s. It's heavy. You know, so no, still no one's ever done it. So he says, he goes, and it was just like mountains. We had to like crawl over the records. And he's going, no, I had to, because I had to get to those blues sites because I was looking for Rube Lacey, Ham Hound Crave. <laughs> you know, he's telling us all this. And he goes, it was way in the back of the place. I was sure. He goes, he's digging through it. And I was going, he's going, I was going, well, what else is there? What else did you see? He goes, oh, well, there's a lot of Sun Records. He says, because I wasn't even paying attention to Sun Records, man. We just break that stuff when we're walking across to try to get to the blues records. <laughs> Get yourself 